Welcome to the shop. And today I have a very fine specimen, an old specimen on the workbench that I really am excited to share with you. The airplane that you see behind me is something called a top flight elder. And particularly, this is the smaller version. This is the 20 size version. Top Flight had a couple of these. Uh, there was a larger 40 size version that also flew very nicely, but it's really fun because it's more of a sport scale model. It's uh, reminiscent of you know one of those World War I era airplanes. The, uh, the tail half is not covered and it's kind of fun on the fuselage to have that exposed and you think, oh, wouldn't that be a lot of drag? But it's actually kind of not. Um, airplane flies very, very nicely. I'll get into some flying footage while I'm talking today just to make this video a little more efficient. Um, just a couple of specs about the, the, the airplane, the way I've got it set up. Originally, they're designed for glow engines. So this involved a very nice electric conversion. <laughs> Uh, I am using uh, a master air screw prop first and foremost. Uh, master air screw makes great props that are very period correct for this uh, particular model. It is just a very robust prop that I know can take a lot of beating, especially on my runway. I talk about a lot. My runway is really rough. Uh, but in addition to that, I'm running a Sunny Sky X3 motor. It's a 2216, I think. Anyway, it's a 1100 kV motor and it pulls the airplane around just fine. Uh, had to use some standoffs and, and it's just uh, metal tubes with washers. Really long bolts. That's it. Nothing too terribly mystical about it. I'm still using T-nuts on the back side of the firewall. It's kind of a pain to get in there because it's a long reach up through the uh, up through the fuselage. If you'll notice on the fuselage itself, there's no battery hatch per se, and that's because the battery has to live up here in order to have the nose weight that we need to fly. Now, that involves removing the wing every single time you fly, but it's only two bolts, and there's something missing from this wing that most of you may be familiar with. Yeah, ailerons. There's no ailerons on this model. It's a three-channel plane, and I wanted to keep it a three-channel plane because it's a good reminder of being a pilot, being a true pilot, like working with the plane, not just telling the plane exactly what I wanted to do, and it just does it. Anyway, so this airplane does everything in a bag of chips that I want it to. It even has a really nice pilot on it. And you just can't get pilots that nice anymore that come on airplanes. I'm telling you, I, I built I built an airplane for a buddy in my club recently, and the pilot looked like a cartoon. Like just like poorly painted even. It was just it was bad. Uh, anyway, it's uh, it's a good thing to have a nice pilot because when it's down on the ground, you can look at it. Now, there are a couple of things about this model. This is just string. Okay, so these don't actually, you know, flap or anything when it's in the air, but it's not elastic cord. It's like a, a nylon cord, and the same thing it goes on the tail too. So uh, those are the details about the model, but really what we're here today, oh yeah, also really nice uh, old Dubro wheels, I think. The reason we're here today is the speed controller. Okay, so why is the speed controller important? Okay, first and foremost, I have to tell you, I bought this speed controller with my own money. Uh, this is not a paid promotion at all. Uh, and you guys know that I don't do reviews on stuff too terribly often, especially on stuff that I pay for myself. Now, I have used the ZTW Beatles speed controllers for quite some time now. I have them on, on a number of models just because they're cheap and reliable and have that had good performance. They don't produce the same kind of whine on electric outrunners that you sometimes get on other speed controllers. And to me, having an airplane be as quiet as possible to let the airplane speak like more to itself that's important for me. I don't like the electric noise. That being said, uh, the new G2 
version of the Beatles, ZTW Beatles line. I love this. Uh, this is the first one that I bought and I bought it just because mm -hmm. I needed a speed controller for this particular motor and I didn't have one of that size. So I popped it in there and I'll, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'm, I'm, it's great. It's great. So number one, it also has uh, a reverse function. I don't have it plugged in. I haven't tried using it. So I'm just going to mention that it's there. I don't know how it works because I haven't had to yet. Uh, I may want to put it on one of my float planes in order to reverse and be able to maneuver around on the water. So there's that. That's a nice feature to have. So in addition to that, uh, they changed the algorithm in the throttle control. Now this is important because I do have this speed controller on another model of my, my uh, SIG Cadet Senior. And I love it on that plane because it, again, smooth running. But the only downside is every once in a while, because I have a pretty large prop with a low cell count on a big motor, it sometimes run in, runs into timing issues when I'm just starting to taxi out. I don't have any real problems in the air, but right when I taxi, when I, right when I throttle up, if I advance the throttle too quickly, it does this kind of... And sometimes it'll even screech a little bit on me. It's just a timing thing. It's not a huge deal, but not on this. Uh, <laughs> so I am running a 10.6 prop on this uh, on this this motor it's a little bit big in diameter maybe uh, but I don't think it's terribly loaded down but I did try to do some testing with a larger prop um, and it was difficult because you don't have a whole lot of room here I got three fingers I got about three three and a half fingers of clearance here so going with 12 and 13 inch props was pretty pretty great um didn't have any of the screeching problems and it's a very solid solid outcome now uh i i love that i am able to just throw this equipment in the airplane and fly uh but really it, it's it's just a matter of knowing how to do these kinds of conversions this model is great for throwing in the back of the plane or back of the car <laughs> on a Sunday and just do some lazy turns around the field and just look at the model. It's not terribly aerobatic. It's a three channel airplane. The most you're gonna be able to do is a loop. And with the power in this motor, you can do one, but it's gonna kind of be sloppy at the top because <laughs> you don't have any ailerons to, to keep your wings level at the top, right? So you really got to plan it. And it's just, it's a fun airplane to just goof around and remember how to fly the plane. But I, I got to tell you guys, I cannot endorse this enough. If you're looking for a speed controller for your build this winter or next winter or whatever, you guys really need to consider the ZTW Beetles G2 series. You can get them at Buddy RC. Uh, I have an affiliate link in the description below and it helps me. Uh, I do get a little bit of commission on them. It helps me continue to do my work uh, here on this channel for you guys. Uh, but really, I'm, I'm, like I said, I bought this with my own money. I am not being paid to promote this product. It's just a good product that you guys need to know about because there's there's so much market saturation with different speed controllers and it's important that you have information wherever you can anyway i hope you guys enjoy this video and that you're gonna just do the very best that you can with what you have because that's what i do in my shop i don't have all the best of the best I just make do with what I can and have a good time flying and meeting new friends at the flying field. So keep working on your flying works of art and I'll catch you on the next one.